a navel orange variety that is sweet, seedless and absolutely delicious. Let's look at growing the Washington navel orange. So we grew this tree in Irvine, California zone 10 and as you can see the tree is hardly visible and this was a one year old tree that we got from our local garden center and this semi dwarf Washington navel orange tree grows to a height of about 7 to 10 feet and I always recommend that you grow dwarf or semi dwarf trees in your garden they do not take up a lot of space and they do produce a lot of fruit now let's talk a little bit about the history of this plant this Washington navel orange was actually imported from a city called Bahia in Brazil and then sent out to different states in the United States of America now this was back in the 1870s from all the trees that were sent out the ones in California thrived and produced delicious oranges that became an instant success and the one person responsible for cultivating this orange variety in Southern California is Eliza Tibbets. She was the one who cultivated, took care of these plants and greatly contributed to the part of Southern California that's known as Orange County today. So let's look at the first uh, three years of growing this plant. You need to choose a nice sunny spot to grow your Washington navel orange tree. Just like any other citrus tree, it needs a lot of sunlight and it needs at least about six to eight hours of sunlight every day. Now, the plant will start flowering somewhere around spring, which is about March or April, and then it will produce fruits that you can harvest starting October. So it flowers in spring and then you can start harvesting your fruits from October through about January. So depending on when you want to harvest the fruits, you can plan to grow different varieties of oranges. For example, there are other varieties like Cara Cara, which produce fruits earlier. This plant produces fruits in the winter season. So as you can see here, this plant grows pretty much like a bush, not like a full-fledged tree. And that's a characteristic of dwarf or semi-dwarf trees. Now for the first one to three years, I would say like at least the first four years, you need to make sure that you follow a very good fertilizer schedule for your orange trees. And I've explained the fertilizer schedule for fruit trees in one of my previous videos. I do recommend that you check it out. But in general, what you need to do is start feeding your plants with a good organic fertilizer somewhere around the spring season and then at least add fertilizer about two to three times during the growing season. So that's a good ballpark to remember. It's very important that you do add fertilizer once you plant or you get your tree and plant it at least for the first four years. So as you can see here the fruits look pretty good. They're large fruits and they're called navel because of a unique mutation that occurs in this plant and I'll show you that when we cut open the fruit. You can see here the fruits are pretty large. They weigh about 370 grams or about 13 ounces. And that's a pretty good sized fruit. Pretty large, pretty sweet and very delicious. And as you can see here, the plant produces these heavy fruits. So you might see that the branches are drooping down once the fruits become heavy but the branches are pretty strong. They don't really break. They can hold the weight of all these fruits. So very pretty looking fruits. They have a nice thick rind and taste wise I think these are one of the best citrus trees you can grow in your garden. The oranges are very delicious, very sweet. They are seedless. And I highly recommend that you try growing this orange variety. Now this orange variety will not tolerate a complete frost uh, freeze. So I recommend that if you do get a freeze in your area, you plant them in containers so that you can get them home indoors during the chilly winter months. Now as far as watering goes, it really depends on the temperatures in your area. But citrus do like to be dry in between waterings. 
So if your plant is small, you can get away with watering every two to three times a week. And as your plant grows up and grows bigger, you need to limit the watering to maybe about once a week or twice a week, really depending on how hot it gets in your area. So as you can see here, this plant produces more and more fruits as time goes by and will give you very delicious oranges once the tree is established, which takes about two years or so. Now this plant is seedless, so it cannot be propagated via seeds and it can be propagated by grafting and by buds. So that is the only way to propagate this plant. Now a lot of you have asked me if there's any problem growing seedless varieties and the answer is no. Seedless plants do occur in nature. They are not GMOs, they are not genetically modified. They are perfectly healthy plants that you can grow and eat. And the reason they do not have seeds is because they have evolved to this stage. For example, even the banana had seeds once upon a time. But as we started cultivating the plant, the plant evolved and it now gives us bananas that are seedless. One of the insects that really devastates this plant is the leaf miner. And as you can see here, we did have some leaf miner damage very early on when we got this plant. And this is especially true when the plant is producing new leaves. The leaf miners like to attack these new leaves and then just completely destroy the plant. Now on mature trees, the leaf miner doesn't really have much effect. But if you have a small tree and it's affected by leaf miners, there's a very easy solution to take care of your leaf miner attack. So all you do is take a pump sprayer and then mix spinosad and mineral oil and then spray your plants. Spray your plants very well. And if you want to follow a schedule, please do refer to my video on tackling the leaf miner attack on citrus plants and you'll get an idea of how to deal with this problem. Now make sure when you're spraying that you spray the entire plant, the underside of the leaves as well, and also a little bit on the ground where the leaf miner adults lay their eggs. And they should do a good job of taking care of your leaf miner attack on your citrus plants. Now a lot of YouTube viewers have given me feedback that they need to see how the fruit looks like whenever I'm making these videos. So here it is. This is how the Washington navel orange looks like. And when you cut open the orange, you can clearly see the navel, which is pretty much like a small fruit at the bottom of the orange. You can clearly see that in the cross section. And as I mentioned earlier, this is due to the mutation of this plant, which produces this small fruit at the bottom of this fruit. And it's just the way the plant is. This is a wonderful plant. It produces oranges that are sweet, delicious and prolific and seedless as well. So here's one more. And during the harvest season, you can harvest a lot of oranges from this plant. This is an excellent plant to grow in your home garden. And looking at the cross section, this is a beautiful orange. Extremely beautiful, seedless and very good to eat. So there we have it folks. That was our episode on growing the Washington Naval Orange. I hope I covered all the aspects of growing this tree in your garden. If you have any more questions, do drop in a comment. And if you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.